From Advisory Board, we're bringing you a radio advisory, your weekly download on how to untangle healthcare's most pressing challenges. My name is Rachel Woods. You can call me Ray. Last week in part two of our series on value-based care, we talked about how CenterWell, which is Humana's provider arm, is growing their value-based care strategy. And they're doing that by focusing on seniors. But as the Medicare Advantage market gets bigger, gets older, frankly gets sicker, controlling spend in primary care may not be enough. Value-based care on the specialty side is actually the future. And that's why in part three of our series, I want to tell the story of Zing Health, which is an organization that focuses on specialty value-based care by focusing on specific conditions. So to talk about what good specialty care in MA looks like, I've brought on TJ Ackerman, Senior Vice President of Provider and Network Performance at Zing. And later, we're going to bring on one of their provider partners, Will Stokes, the Chief Strategy Officer at Strive Health, which focuses on integrated kidney care for patients with chronic kidney disease and end-stage renal disease. For now, let's welcome TJ. Welcome to Radio Advisory, TJ. Thanks for having me. I don't want to assume that our audience knows who you are or what your organization is. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't know who Zing was before we started getting into this topic of specialty value-based care. So tell our audience a little bit more about what Zing is, what you intend to do in the market. Yeah. So Zing is a minority founded regional Medicare Advantage plan founded in 2019 with a specific focus to address traditionally underserved populations. Uh, And just a little context one of our founders was a physician on the south side of Chicago for a, a mm. very long time and saw firsthand the populations that were uh, inadequately addressed by most of the healthcare industry, both payer and provider side. Uh, and so that's what Zing has sought to do back in 2019, launched during COVID, and has since grown to just over 10,000 lives with a specific focus on Uh, chronic special needs plans, recognizing that there's a higher prevalence of chronic conditions in the black and brown communities that we seek to serve. And this is where we're going to start to get into what might actually be new territory for our listeners. If I'm honest, I feel like they often kind of conflate value-based care has to equal primary care. I mentioned that I didn't know who Zing was before we really started getting into this topic, but I guarantee that our listeners know of folks like ChenMed, Oak Street, right? The primary care focused Mm value-based care organizations. You've really taken a different approach. Tell me why did you choose to focus on specialty care? If you take a step back and recognize that the Medicare Advantage landscape is extremely saturated, Uh, We hear that uh, from every Mm -hmm. provider we talk with, uh, every health system that we partner with. And so Zing really had to define where we fit into the health payer continuum. And chronic special needs plans or CSNPs were an area that is uh, very underutilized when you think about the prevalence of chronic conditions, not just in the communities that we seek to serve, but all Medicare Advantage eligibles upwards of 50% of uh, that cohort of individuals has some type of qualifying chronic condition. You know, our definition of specialty care is acutely focused on those chronic special needs plans, CHF, chronic heart failure, chronic kidney disease, diabetes, uh, where we can design benefit plans that address the actual clinical needs of those individuals that have these conditions. And so we still partner with the PCP risk-bearing entities that you referenced, the Oak Streets of the world, et cetera. But then we've taken it a step further and built out a a VBC continuum of our own and a strategy that includes both a spot for the primary care, a spot for specialty entities that focus on these chronic conditions, as well as home-based entities. So you're really focused on the condition, right? You named three. You mentioned uh, uh, heart failure. You mentioned chronic kidney disease. You mentioned diabetes. And you're targeting those conditions through these C-SNP plans, which are a part of Medicare Advantage. What is a a C-SNP and what does it allow you to do that is different than traditional MA? Yeah. So 
CSNP chronic special needs plan is a Medicare Advantage benefit offering. People, I think, are far more familiar with DSNP plans where you have to be dual eligible in Medicare and Medicaid. A CSNP, the requirement is you have to have a, the clinical diagnosis for one of these chronic conditions. And CMS has a list of chronic conditions that you can offer uh, a plan for. Again, Zing has focused on diabetes, CHF. We recently launched a ESRD or end-stage renal disease CSNP yep. offering. Yep. But I think the real value here is these are plans that are designed, the specific benefits are designed to address the clinical needs of that population. And if you think about the clinical needs of someone with CHF versus a healthy 68, 70-year-old that is yes. on the golf course quite frequently are going to be very, very different. And the the kind of benefit to the patient is a little bit more obvious to me. It's one of the things I want to keep talking about in the duration of this conversation. But can we just take a moment and talk about the business side for a second? You said yourself, the Medicare Advantage market is saturated. Not only is it saturated, it's also being squeezed. It's being squeezed this year, frankly, with changes to star ratings, rate cuts, right? It's It's more difficult to be kind of financially successful in MA, Tell me more about the benefits of the, the business model behind the CSNP plans. Yeah, it's a really good question. So we're, we're not immune to the pressures that I think all managed care organizations are feeling uh, as you know the regulatory uh, environment continues to change and shift. I will say that uh, on the surface, a, a member that enrolls in a chronic special needs plan innately has a higher risk than your traditional Medicare Advantage member because of the chronic condition that they have to have in order to enroll in these plans. So when you think about how risk adjustment ties to revenue and things of that nature on the Medicare, on the business side of Medicare Advantage, not all members are created equal. So when we yeah. partner with our primary care risk bearing entities, they can have a thousand MA lives that are at risk score X worth $1,000 PMPM. They could have 1,000 CSNP lives at a different risk score that are worth you know, $1,700, $1,800 PMPM. So the financials there do start to look very different in the CSNP cohort yeah. versus your traditional Medicare Advantage cohort. With that said, you know, going back to the regulatory components, uh, there there's some squeezing happening, but I think Zing's not immune, but we are able to mitigate a lot of that impact because hmm. our investment and benefits are focused on those things that truly impact the clinical needs of a member. So we're less focused on your flex card and being able to get gas in your car and things like that. And we're more focused on zero dollar tiering of formulary for your most highly utilized diabetic drugs, cardiovascular yeah. drugs. We are lowering the co-pays associated with the specialists that are you're going to see very frequently, your nephrologist, your endocrinologist, your cardiologist, your ophthalmologist. I imagine that it is very important to have the right provider partner because you've said maybe five times now how important it is to manage the clinical condition of this population. Yeah. How do you go about finding the right partner? Recognizing our focus on chronic conditions, we, we needed to dive headfirst into that specialty space. Yes. And so it became an evaluation of a lot of individual companies, newer companies are out there addressing different clinical conditions. Um, and, and we recognized the need for a cardiovascular partner, a diabetic partner, and a kidney care partner right from the very beginning. And we actually have one of those partners with us on this podcast, Will Stokes from Strive Health, which is a provider organization focused on value-based care for chronic kidney disease. Will, welcome to Radio Advisory. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. I'm going to give you the same offer that I gave to TJ. Tell us more about Strive and what you do to support patients with chronic kidney disease. Yeah, absolutely. So Strive Health is a value-based kidney care company. We're delivering a complete clinical model for patients with chronic kidney disease and end-stage renal disease with the ultimate goal of improving clinical outcomes and reducing costs. And we partner with payers and providers across the country as the specialist in chronic kidney disease and end-stage renal disease. 
most of our partners have a general population and we're brought in Mm -hmm. for that clinical model. Because it's needed, right? Because you need that extra layer of care and specificity when you're talking about a a set of diseases as complex as ESRD and CKD. Absolutely. These are patients in a, a low prevalence but high complexity condition that too often fall through the cracks of a, yes. of a general model. I think we're in about 35 states now, 110,000 members who we manage in a value-based care model. They account for about $4 billion of, of healthcare spend in this country. Um, so a big population of patients, despite um, the specialized nature and a, and a big problem for the healthcare system that we're trying to address. And tell me more about the two of you and how you came together. And I guess more specifically, one of the things that's in the back of my mind is that even though you're growing quite quite quickly, your two organizations represent, I mean, dare I say, kind of smaller fish in this, this pond of everything that's happening with value-based care, everything that's happening with Medicare Advantage. I have to imagine that you two coming together not only serves patients, not only you know, is going to support your business model, which it has to. But I have to believe it also gives you, you know, a little bit of armor to go up against the big guys. Am I right? Absolutely. Yes, I agree that um, I'll speak on behalf of Zing. I think we we understand exactly where we fit in the uh, small fish, big pond that is uh, Medicare Advantage. Yes. Um, but this partnership with Strive, I think, has been mutually beneficial in the evolution of both of our organizations and the growth of both of our organizations. And I would say, interestingly, both of our companies are entering categories with very large, mature, established players in the space. Large yeah. Alice organizations in the kidney care space, very large Medicare Advantage uh, plans in a, as TJ mentioned, a very consolidated space. I think, Will, you hit on something earlier too of we are both focused on a smaller subset or smaller cohort of the larger Medicare Advantage population, but one that requires an extremely high level of touch and a high level of engagement, a high level of utilization, yes. um, which is ripe for efficiencies in management to help them you know, manage through their chronic conditions. I want to acknowledge the fact that the, most of the folks that listen to this podcast are are business leaders in healthcare, right? They're healthcare executives, they're maybe VPs, they're directors, right? We're talking to the business folks. So I want you to define for us, what does success actually look like when your organizations come together? And what is it that you need from each other in order to get to that definition of success? If Strive is not successful managing our CKD ESRD population, then Zing is not successful. Um, the me- it's not it's not a good situation for the member either. And so sure. what we're looking for is financial and clinical success. If we set full risk targets, we want to empower Strive as much as possible, them sitting first chair driving the clinical model, but Zing as the health plan providing all the supplemental support necessary to effectively manage that population below the MLR target set in our agreement, Mm -hmm. leading to lower cost of care, um, which is important for the whole healthcare system. Obviously, there's financial gains to be had for Strive, and ultimately, Zing benefits from effective management of that membership cohort. At its root, and kind of getting down to brass tacks on the math, we have to find a way to manage this population at an an MLR, at a medical loss ratio, at a a healthcare cost level that is profitable and sustainable for both organizations. Yes. Historically, some of these members were sort of pushed off of Medicare Advantage plans because they were seen as just an inevitable kind of loss leading population. Too expensive. Dialysis patients, they're too expensive. They're never going to be profitable for the average health plan. That was sort of the old school of thought. You know, as we come into this, you know, we know both organizations know that if managed well, um, if taken care of proactively, if we deliver preventative care, keep patients out of the hospital, these are members who can do really well clinically with this specialized model, but can do very well financially if, if managed appropriately um, through this model. And so when we look at our sort of financial alignment, we have a real opportunity to truly create a win-win um, contract whereby Zing is able to make money sustainably on this population, grow that membership and seek to grow that membership. Um, Not very many health plans are out there trying to grow their ESRD membership. No. Zing is. Strive needs to find a way in a contract with Zing where 
they're getting value, but we're also able to manage uh, a profitable population as well within our own model. And, and we think we've we've sort of found that structure in our partnership. And that's that's fairly unique. This is really interesting for me because the big experiment with value-based care and frankly, the big experiment with Medicare Advantage is can we actually at least uphold outcomes while reducing costs? And when it comes to that experiment, there are actually very few folks that are doing that well, if at all. What, practically speaking, do you need in your own businesses and in your partnership in order to actually get to we're going to improve or at least uphold outcomes and and we're actually going to lower costs? That case for value-based care is a challenging one to build. It requires large populations and a lot of time managing a population to truly prove that you've done it. You've done what you've described. So for us in our partnership, it's it's early on, it's early days. And it, the path there is is more members and more time managing those members together to show and be able to demonstrate to ourselves and externally that, that we've achieved sort of that value-based care aim. I will say that the leading indicators are very, very positive. Good enrollment and engagement of patients, patients who are actually utilizing the services that we think are going to improve outcomes. We're seeing impact on reduced hospitalizations for patients engaged in a program. We're seeing good kind of clinical outcomes around the yep. specialty itself. You know, patients transitioning smoothly to dialysis, getting more transplants, things of that nature. Okay. But it's early days, and those are leading indicators to that ultimate goal of population level improved MLR and lowered costs. And so, what have we put in place at Zing? You know, through our call center, customer service, onboarding to make every single member aware, hey, you have CKD, you signed up with Zing, this is our partner. This is who yes. you should be engaging with. They're going to address your clinical needs instead of just having it be an offering that sits on our website. This is a proactive, you you chose this plan because you have a chronic condition. These are the uh, partners we use to help manage those chronic conditions and we get them engaged with you. I see, I see. One element of that we haven't really mentioned that I think extends and I think is is common in specialty value-based care at large. Strive has partnered with about 750 nephrologists out in the community and growing. Um, and a big part of specialty value-based care is not just entities like Strive, but really bringing the specialty and specialist network sort of online into value-based care. And Strive is, is doing that in nephrology that's great from a clinical standpoint. You have to have those physicians engaged and involved to be successful in these populations. Yeah. It's not just primary care. You know, in our category, a nephrologist also, uh, maybe even more so, has to be sort of activated and aligned to the, the clinical goals we're trying to achieve. But that's also an underpenetrated kind of Medicare Advantage market. ESRD, especially CKD, it's a population that hasn't been a focus. It's a specialty category that hasn't been a focus for Medicare Advantage plans historically. And there's a lot of members out there on traditional Medicaid or otherwise that don't don't know about Zing, don't know that a ESRD C SNP is an is an option for them. Yeah. And we have an opportunity to connect with those patients and and kind of present them with an offering in a much more kind of hands-on focused way through that network and through that connectivity to the community and to the patients in the community. We'll be right back with more radio advisory after this short break. Want to put numbers on the future of surgery in your market? Use Advisory Board's Market Scenario Planner to see volume forecasts by service line, subservice line, and procedure, and how they vary across sites of care. Create your own market definitions to see customized forecasts, or create multiple to compare opportunities across markets. Like all of our data tools, access is included with your research membership. Click the link in the show notes to access the tool. As a healthcare leader, you understand the importance of continuous learning and development for your team. That's why Advisory Board has combined industry learning and development best practices with years of research and insights to bring you on-demand training courses. Say goodbye to lengthy training sessions and hello to bite-sized, easy-to-absorb courses that will have your team up to speed in no time. Whether your team needs to gain knowledge on specific topics like value-based care, health equity, or site of care shifts, 
or they simply want to understand the healthcare landscape better, we've got you covered. Learn why 97% of users feel more confident and capable in their role after taking on-demand courses. Visit advisory.com and search for on-demand courses or find a link in our show notes. You're listening to Radio Advisory. I'm Ray Woods. We happen to be talking mostly about kidney conditions, right? Chronic kidney disease and stage renal disease because of your your partnership. But I have to ask, maybe TJ, this is this is more for you. Do the structures that you've put in place with partners like Strive, which which are which are very deep kind of structures, will they scale and apply to other conditions, either the ones that you're already focused on or even conditions beyond just heart failure and diabetes? Or is there really enough differentiation between conditions and between CSNP plans that you've got to have kind of fundamentally different partners, different options for each group you're focused on? On the surface, there's there's definitely a blend, right? There's there's so many comorbidities in the CKD population or the CHF population. It's less likely you'll have an individual that only has CHF. And so yes. what we've found is we're partnering with other entities that can handle their primary focus, if you will, where Strive is CKD, ESRD, or kidney care, to make it very simple. We've identified others that their primary focus is diabetes, primary focus is cardiovascular disease. I think that the the job we have to do at the health plan is making sure that Strive understands who they are accountable for managing and these other entities understand who they are accountable for managing. So you hear attribution is a big struggle within, Mm -hmm. I think, specialty value-based care because with PCP, it's very easy. If I select Ray as my primary care physician, I'm holding Ray accountable as a health plan for management of TJ's total cost of care, quality of care, et cetera. Well, when you go into the specialty space, how do you delineate between kidney care and CHF and diabetes? Especially when patients have to pick one special needs plan, right? Even if they fall into that category, which to your point, many of them do where they have multiple chronic conditions, they can't have multiple C-SNPs, correct? They can't have multiple C-SNPs, but to clarify, the C-SNP offering that we have in place at Zing is for multi-conditions. I see. Okay. This goes back to some of the regulatory requirements of CMS. You can have a diabetes-only C-SNP, a CHF-only C-SNP, or you can have a combination. Uh, And that probably also speaks to why you have then specific provider partners who are going to have the, the specificity to focus on that special population. Yes, exactly. And so what we've been focused on over the past 12 months as we've onboarded Strive and some of these other partners is the the overlap between them. And so we've worked with our clinicians internally, as well as our partners like Strive and others to say, look, if this individual has kidney care needs and they are utilizing a Strive nephrologist, then Strive is accountable for the full management of that member, even if that member has diabetes along with their CKD. Because we've had these conversations with Will and his team of, yeah, their primary focus is the kidney care population, but their clinical model contemplates holistic care for that member, not just the acute nephrology and dialysis needs of that population. I do want to acknowledge the fact that you two are really representing something that is a bit unique in healthcare, which is that you are focused on specific populations. And most of our listeners are seeing or working with general populations, right? I'm curious, what advice do you have for them, right, when it comes to what good specialty care would look like for an organization that is trying to move forward in value-based care? They're trying to serve the needs of specific populations, but they don't necessarily have the same kind of benefit that you all have, structural benefit that you all have of just focusing on select groups. My, my thought as a health plan is when I have conversations with integrated health systems or community-based providers, my, my value proposition and pitch for Zing is if you have a patient of yours that has one of these chronic conditions, then I would challenge you to defend why you're not promoting them to enroll in one of these CSNP offerings. And mm-hmm. selfishly, I'd love for it to be Zing, but it doesn't have to be. There are other entities out there that are offering a CSNP. But when you think about a diabetic member who or a diabetic patient who's 
not adherent to their medication, maybe it's because they can't afford it, then why are they in a plan that has a great flex card and all these other flashy benefits, but not one that has zero dollar formulary for the drugs they need to be taking to help manage their condition? And so recognizing that they're dealing with a general population, my ask is Zing can fit into your general population by helping remove the financial barriers for your patients that have these chronic conditions. It's not going to be a plan for everyone, right? Like we said at the top of the call, a healthy 70-year-old may be perfectly fine in their uh, general enrollment HMO plan. They don't need all these other benefits that we have tailored to chronic heart failure. But if you have a patient who does, let us do the hard work for you by structuring the benefits that inevitably will lead them or we hope will lead them to be more compliant with the clinical care plan that you as a physician or you as the health system are prescribing. And then I think from the provider side, it, it's similar themes that sort of applied, applied to providing care. One, take a data-driven sort of intellectually honest approach to where the generalized model is leaving gaps. Where are patients yeah. falling to gaps? Where are the outcomes underperforming, which patients are less engaged, and really identify where those gaps are, and then proactively identify and close those in those populations. And then second, you know, there has to be connectivity to the specialist community that goes beyond referral management that was built in the fee-for-service paradigm. There has to be real communication, real data sharing, real clinical collaboration around patients. And that's hard work that takes integration, sometimes technology integration, but it, it, it takes an effort to really look at those specialists as partners, not just referral relationships, and looking for ways to collaborate with those physicians who are really going to be a primary caregiver in the care for that specialist condition. Well, I appreciate both of you coming on Radio Advisory. I have one more question for you. This, this conversation is happening as we're talking about value-based care in this industry more broadly. My question for you is, what does the future of specialty value-based care actually look like? We're starting to see this now in specialty value-based care is there's a proliferation of disease-specific provider entities. So um, Will can speak in more detail to the kidney care space. You see it in cardiovascular, you see it in orthopedics, you see it in oncology, you see it in diabetes. I equate it in a way to the cable streaming conundrum that we've dealt with. (laughs) Everyone got sick of paying for their local cable and they were kind of felt uh, locked in. And so they went this a la carte route. And so I do think I would caution the industry of getting too a la carte with the different specialties. Ah. Because as you start to carve things up, we talked about it a number of times during today's discussion. There's so many comorbidities that how do you effectively decide that an individual needs to be prioritized with this clinical condition over this one. Now, physicians can make that call, right? And we can look at total cost of care and and the clinical outcomes that are required. But I do think that's a fine line that we're going to have to navigate both on the provider side and the plan side of not having so many options that you're you're losing sight of the holistic management of an individual. Yeah has one of these conditions. Yeah, I think from the provider side, you know, especially value-based care is new as as Ray called out early in this discussion, you know, primary care has gotten all the attention in value-based care and, and specialist physicians have largely kind of been left out of that trend. I think this space can reach a sustainable place when those physicians, those provider practices have a meaningful component of their business and their practices in a value-based care model. There's a lot of details to figure out structure around how attribution works, the specifics of the payment model, um, but ultimately for standard of care to change, for this to reach sort of scale across the country, you know, physicians and caregivers in the community have to be operating with a value-based care mindset and have to be yes. incentivized yes. to outcomes. Well, Will, TJ, I'm so excited to see what your organizations do next. Thank you so much for coming on Radio Advisory. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. 
There's a lot that all of us can learn from understanding what different populations need in primary care. Today, we focused on seniors, but the bigger takeaway for me is the recognition that one size fits all primary care doesn't work for anyone. And there's a lot that all of you can do to make care better for the senior population specifically. And remember, as always, we're here to help. Coming soon on Radio Advisory. All of us sitting on the stage have had bad technology thrust upon us, yes. um, designed in a vacuum without the voice of clinicians. Yes. Um, and that is a mistake that unfortunately too many entrepreneurs' companies continue to make over and over. New episodes drop every Tuesday. If you like Radio Advisory, please share it with your networks. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and leave a rating and a review. Radio Advisory is a production of Advisory Board. This episode was produced by me, Ray Woods, as well as Abby Burns, Kristen Myers, and Atticus Rosh. The episode was edited by Katie Anderson, with technical support provided by Dan Tyag, Chris Phelps, and Joe Schramm. Additional support was provided by Carson Sisk, Leanne Elston, and Aaron Collins. We'll see you next week. Perfect. Pros. The word value has been a buzzword in healthcare for years, but little change has been made to actually improve the patient experience. It's time for all sectors of the healthcare industry to refocus on the core drivers of value. Join us on April 23rd and 24th at the Advisory Board 2024 Value Summit in New Orleans, where we'll explore affordability, clinical quality, patient experience, and value-based care payment models. Collaborate with experts and stakeholders from across the healthcare ecosystem, build your network of forward-thinking leaders, and leave with actionable steps for your organization. Register now using the link in the show notes or visit advisory.com slash events to learn more. With the respiratory season underway, health systems are facing the triple threat of COVID-19, flu, and RSV. Advisory Board published a new cheat sheet, sponsored by QHealth, that outlines key challenges of this season and how health systems can effectively prepare for its impact and mitigate the strain on healthcare resources. Look for the link in this episode's show notes to learn more.